Alrighty, what is up everyone? How's it going? My name is Kaylee. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My apologies for it being out of focus. I'm dumb. So I know I don't normally make videos like this. I usually have far more crazy, cuckoo, silly, funny content. But today I thought we would just sit down in a very chill manner. I'm in my swivel chair. It swivels. Yeah. And I thought we would have like a little Q&A session because I really haven't done a video like this on my channel. Um, this is gonna be more on the serious side for sure. Uh, I, there really isn't a lot that I've talked about when it comes to me and myself. So I guess without any further ado, we can go ahead and get started. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm feeling a little bit insecure because I'm not wearing my usual gray sweater. I'm like, very much sleeveless and i don't really i haven't done that in the video but we're getting vulnerable so everyone sit back and relax i have no makeup on my hair is up i'm just chilling so Jay, Jay i guess there's nothing else to do besides get started i also just had chipotle so i am filled to the brim with food <laughs> I literally have so many questions, so I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. So we're going to start with an easy one. Someone asks, what inspired you to start doing YouTube? So if you're unaware and you haven't seen my, I'll put the video up there. It's basically me talking about how I used to do YouTube back around 2009, 2010. Basically, when I was like 13, back in like 2009, I started doing YouTube and I did it all the way up until I was a junior in high school. And then I stopped, went to college. Drop, dropped out of college and then i was like what am i gonna do and so now i'm doing youtube again so what inspired me was the sheer fact that i was doing nothing else but the first time what inspired me was i was feeling really like an outcast in school i felt like i didn't really belong i didn't really have a lot of friends so i just like looked to the internet and that's kind of how it started what is the hardest life lesson you've learned so far i think the hardest life lesson i've had to learn is it's up to you to make your life special and amazing and important i remember growing up i was super insecure and i would put a lot of my happiness into others and i would sort of look to others for happiness if you want to have a good life you got to do it yourself it's up to no one else to make your life good and another really hard pill to swallow is especially with me doing youtube and stuff is not everyone is going to like the stuff that i put out and that's been really hard because i really drill it into i guess my own head your content's got to be good your content's got to be good but no matter matter what I put out, there's going to be people who don't care for it. And there's going to be people and, and there's going to be people who love it. What is the first step slash approach to self love? So that's a hard one um, because it really wasn't up until so I'm 23. I'm old. I'm old for YouTube. It really wasn't until I think going into my 23rd year of life when I truly started to value who I was and love myself and the decisions I make were all based on the love I have for myself and the care that I had for myself when before it was never the case. And I'll go into that later. I think there's another question in here, but the first step was for me at least was to get help and by help, I don't mean like going to your friends, asking for advice. I mean, getting like professional help, someone who can guide you into that self-love and to sort of help you into that next season of your life when you go from low self-esteem and hating yourself. And I think therapy is like the one thing that truly saved my life. And I definitely wouldn't be here today without therapy. So if I could give advice to someone, it's to seek help in that way. And I know that can be easier said than done, especially when you're young and you might not have the resources like I remember being like a really young depressed preteen and teen and not knowing what the hell to do I kind of wish I had someone like myself I wish I had me now for my younger self like an older sister maybe but let me be your older sister to tell you therapy is okay if you cannot achieve self-love on your own it's okay to ask for professional help would you ever consider plastic surgery thoughts on plastic surgery slash the beauty industry so i don't know if you guys saw the video where i talked about my nose job i will card it up there but the only plastic surgery I, oh well i guess you could sort of consider i have two veneers i guess it's sort of considered 
plastic surgery i don't really know i have two veneers and then i got a nose job i went into depth about it on that video my view has changed drastically since i've had my surgery all i can say is if you're into it or if you if you're looking into it to make sure you are mentally ready for it because i was i was going into it i was going into the surgery thinking it was it was gonna fix uh, my mental illness and it didn't <laughs> make sure it's something that you want to do 100 percent. because to be honest with you i didn't really know if i wanted to do it and i still went with it and while i learned so many lessons like right now sitting here i'm so glad that it happened i didn't think i was going to make it through the recovery and what i mean by that is i didn't know if i was going to make it through the recovery mentally like physically the recovery was 100 percent like painless like it truly felt like it was like a sinus infection opposed to having a whole entire nose job but i didn't know if i was going to make it through mentally like my mental state was not in a good place after the surgery during the recovery and i also want to say while i'm here that i am a hundred percent like a body positive person something i am not is anti surgery if you want to get surgery that is a hundred percent up to you and you have full control over your body and whatever you want to change with it but i do not think it's needed at all ever to live your life and be accepted and that's a hard lesson i had to learn that I didn't need to get this nose job to be loved and to be funny and to be awesome. Because like when you first see your nose, when the cast comes off, it's all swollen and big and you really don't know what it's gonna look like until about a year down the down the road. So what is your opinion on the abortion laws? So there are really strict abortion laws that are going to be put into play for some southern states. The state that I live in included Georgia. So basically they're banning abortion. And this, in my opinion, is very dangerous because this is not going to stop abortion. It's just going to stop safe abortions. One side of the argument is we got to protect the unborn fetuses. You know, life begins at conception, all that. But then on the other hand, there's like a million different layers to the other ar argument you know there can be so many reasons behind a woman getting an abortion chances are a woman getting an abortion isn't because they were like 18 and reckless and even and even if they are 18 and reckless they still should have that right women are just going to start looking elsewhere for abortions which makes it really unsafe and could potentially lead to death and if you don't know what i'm talking about i suggest that you stay informed and do a a google a quick google search on why banning abortion could be very detrimental to women in your life what is the one thing you regret the most i used to be very regretful and very nostalgic all the time like looking back on things i could have done or should have done it just le led me to oh god indigestion's coming i feel it do you go to school and if not what are you doing after so i don't go to school right now but i did go to college i dropped out in my junior year i made a whole entire video you can go check it out i'll card it above about my college experience and there are things that i mentioned in that video that i think i'm definitely going to get to cover in this video but yes i didn't finish school i was halfway done i was so miserable i was like i was at the peak of mental of my like the worst mental illness ever and decided to quit school um that was really hard for the longest time i was kind of mad at myself for doing it how do you learn to accept your body slash yourself my whole body acceptance journey has been the biggest it's been basically a life journey my psychiatrist referred me to this woman who who very randomly her specialty was eating disorders and i always knew i had like extreme disordered eating but i didn't really know how bad it was until we sort of broke it down in therapy and i truly had like a really bad eating disorder and i know i'm like i'm fat and i don't look like i have one but eating disorders come in all shapes and sizes and there are some days where i'm totally in acceptance of my big body and i'm happy happy with it there are days when i just want to give up the fight you know and just it just it feels so much better to just sit there and be like this is me and then other days i wake up and i'm just like fuck this body i hate being big i hate living i hate being big in a thin world but i'm really happy to say that there are more days where i do love my body and my relationship with food that has been so hard she truly has changed my life like my therapist has completely changed the way i've thought about food and how i consume food like i just have such a healthier relationship i can't even describe it but for the longest time i would 
restrict and then binge and then restrict again and then binge and i just did so much yo-yo dieting over the years dieting is bullshit and i'm so happy like i was able to realize that but for the longest time i thought dieting was gonna make me happy i thought being thin was gonna make me happy even when i was thin i was still so fucking miserable because i was so caught up in the calories and the macros and the micros or whatever this is the first summer i think in my whole life that i'm experiencing this type of self-love i've never been this comfortable in my body right now i'm wearing this and i usually don't like i think on camera is the one place where i still but don't but don't get me wrong i still have bad days and that's just part of the recovery this is all a learning process this is there's there's a learning curve to recovering from an eating disorder so you know bad days are gonna happen the short answer i guess is once again getting a therapist and putting in the work she gave me workbooks books to read i also another thing that really helps is taking your like instagram timeline and completely filling it with people who look like you and people who are advocating for things for people that look like you that has helped me so much i follow so many body positivity accounts i can definitely link some of my favorite in the description below i had to like basically unfollow the kardashians like just staring at kendall jenner's body not that there's anything wrong with kendall's body it's just during this recovery time seeing things can be like a little triggering especially when we're taught to think her body is more acceptable than my body not that there's anything wrong once again and also the kardashians sort of stand for things that aren't really for people like me they're really into diet culture they're really into like diet supplements which i don't really believe in at all so yeah that was a really long answer but i hope i answered your question how do you deal with depression or feeling like an outcast amongst your friends find friends who don't make you feel like that for the longest time especially in high school and middle school i had friends who would make me feel like shit who would say like side comments about like my weight and who i was and while i was always a person that joked around like i love joking around and that sort of gave people like the ammunition to make fun of me like oh like we're all laughing let's like make fun of kaylee and i would like go home and cry because it was sad and people would use my humor to walk all over me and take advantage of me so once i got rid of those people and replaced them with people who loved me for me it really all got better i know in high school it can be really scary to drop friends let me tell you though as an adult they drop like flies <laughs> i won't even lie like it's really not that big of a deal when i don't want somebody in my life but in high school because you see these people every day it's hard to like drop people what is the best thing about atlanta so if you don't know um i live in atlanta i have my whole life and i think the best thing for me is the fact that literally all my friends and family are here well besides like some, a few of them but most everyone who i see all the time live in the same city as me and it's so wonderful home is truly where you're able to feel yourself and the people surrounding you are able to make you feel like home would you ever finish undergrad so that's a good question when i first dropped out i basically told everyone i was taking a semester off i was taking a semester off whatever but now that it's been over a year I don't really want to go back to be honest with you i had no idea that youtube was gonna this youtube thing was gonna happen i basically just started making videos because i was bored and unemployed so what is a relationship deal breaker someone who doesn't communicate with me i am so for i used to not be like this at all i used to cower away from confrontation but i love the truth and i love being honest more than i can possibly ex explain being honest is what i love doing like i love telling people how i feel growing up i was a very emotion emotional person and i never really knew how to deal with the millions of emotions that would run through my body every day i'm a pisces i am very much pisces like i'm sensitive i'm baby way what is your day-to-day -day schedule when it comes to video and content creating there is not one this is the one thing in my life that i am truly struggling with so hard i've never done this like i've never worked for myself i've never done any of this so it's like i guess this is like the learning curve part of it where i'm trying to make the most of my time but i'll do that for like three days and i'll be like so burnt out so i like won't do anything for two more days not like i don't i'm not productive i'm just gonna be honest i am not a gal on the go i am not a girl boss i am struggling <laughs> what country do you want to travel to most and why i went to new york 
last week as you saw in my last vlog and that was literally the first place i had been in three years i am scared of the world sometimes it's gotten better but i have an intense anxiety when it comes to traveling places i really want to start going more places and i've i've only been out of the country once and that was to lebanon when i was three and i don't remember that was it hard for you to tell your mom you decided to drop out of college so i had to tell my mom and dad my mom took it really hard because she's from a generation that doesn't really understand that you like love you mom but she comes from a generation that doesn't understand that you can survive and you can actually be successful without a college degree my dad didn't really care because he is an immigrant coming came to the u.s with literally nothing and made this amazing life for himself you know he didn't really go the traditional school route he's like you'll figure it out and if not you can just go back to school so he was a lot more chill in that way what do you think you'd be doing right now if it wasn't for youtube i would either be miserable in school or miserable in school like i don't really i really can't see anything i know this is going to sound really dumb and cliche but i honestly think i'm meant to do this i'm meant to pose video i know that sounds so weird like i'm meant to make youtube videos but at the same time like i truly think this is my calling <laughs> and i've thought this since i was 13 so shut up green or yellow tums only oh sorry hold on green or yellow tum yellow tums only or go home what was high school like for you high school was interesting i really didn't find like my group of friends till my senior year of high school and there are some i still talk to today i actually just hung out with one of one of my best friends from high school and i see like azure's one of my best friends from high school in my last vlog you saw elena my best friend from high school but it was hard because i was so lost like i didn't know myself i didn't know who i was like i said earlier in the video i put all of my happiness that i didn't have for myself into others like i wanted everyone else to feel good but i didn't allow myself to feel good so just know like if you are in high school which i know a lot of you are it's okay to be lost because like it's okay to not know anything or have anything figured out i know there's a question in here about the school system and i think that's what why the school system fails us as 18 year olds because at 18 you're supposed to have everything decided like you're supposed to know about college you're supposed to know what you want to do you're supposed to know what you want to major in like four years is a really long time to commit to something and there are so many people that go to college unsure me being one of them i didn't want to go to college i'm gonna just be honest i didn't but everyone else around me was everyone was going to these great colleges my friends were going were accepted into these great schools and i was like fuck i guess i have to do that now we have like this societal standard and I know you guys probably hear this a lot, but you can do literally anything. Like I'm here telling you, you can do anything you want with your life. And it really wasn't until I dropped out of school last year when I realized, holy shit, I have been living my life for others. And when I dropped out, I was like, fuck, now I have to figure out what I want to do. And I still struggle with it. I still don't know what the fuck I want to do. And that's, that's okay. It's not talked about enough. Someone asks, what is the plan for you after YouTube? <laughs> After. Someone commented on one of my videos the other day and they said, <laughs> they literally asked me, so what is your five year plan? Bitch, my five year plan. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Having goals made me super like have tunnel vision. The goal coming out of high school was go to college. And because I was so fixated on trying to go to college, it made me sort of blind to literally the millions of other possibilities so i kind of don't really want to have goals when it comes to youtube like i used to like like in the beginning of 2019 i would sit there and say what's my subscriber goal like fuck that i don't i don't care i just want to put out good content that's literally all i want to do so plan after youtube I don't know what I'm eating for dinner tomorrow. So there you have it. About 14 times a day I get this question. So I'm just gonna go ahead and answer it. Someone asks, what editor do I use? So I use Final Cut Pro, which um, you can you can buy. It's not cheap. So I recommend you use iMovie if you wanna start like a YouTube channel. Because when it comes to Final Cut versus iMovie, Final Cut does have more. But if you're starting out, iMovie will be just fine. And I have a lot of extensions within that I've downloaded into Final Cut that I use. I also use Photoshop sometimes. People always ask me how I edit my videos. It has truly evolved so much. If you look at my first video, which was like this time last year, it is so different to what it is now. As much as I want to sit here and like go in depth about it and like teach you, you really have to find your own voice and your own type of editing. The biggest piece of advice I can give you, and literally the way I learned, I'm 100% self-taught, YouTube tutorial, anything and everything, there is something out there. Like if you, even if it's the littlest thing in like iMovie, 
there is gonna be a tutorial out there. Can you talk about your experience with body hair shaming? So growing up, I was super hairy. I definitely had a mustache, like, like the peach fuzz on my lip was dark. Everyone has peach fuzz. Some people have dark hair, some people have blonde hair, and obviously you can't see the blonde hair, and I had really thick brows, and I have a lot of hair everywhere, basically. Besides my weight, that was probably the most insecure part of me. Guys were always sort of like my enemy growing up because they would always bully me. So how I got through that, I didn't really get through it, I'll be honest. Um, I kind of just dealt with it, you know, which I feel like most people do. And honestly, I know so many girls who have so much hair, it's just blonde. So we all have hair. Honestly, I think that is all the questions I'm gonna answer. If you watch till the end, thank you so much for listening. If you like deeper videos like this, I recommend you listen to the podcast I co-host with my good friend Courtney. It is called Deep Fried. You can check it out on Apple Podcasts and spotify we have like 15 or so episodes already up and we upload episodes every single wednesday i just i hope you guys love yourselves that's the one thing i ask is that even if you can't accomplish it right away i want you to try to love yourselves and you'll be kind to yourselves all right bye everyone <laughs>